Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your learning experience. As you would have noticed, in this course we have covered all the key topics that will help you in successfully applying the concepts of Six Sigma. We started with an overview and then moved on to the defined phase, which helped us learn how to define the business problem and plan the improvement initiative. Then we covered the measure phase, where we learned how to collect data from the process and understand the current quality or operational performance levels. In the next phase, analyze, we studied the business process and the data generated from the measurement phase to identify the root causes of the problems. In the improvement phase, possible improvement actions were identified and prioritized. These were then tested to finalize the improvement action plan. Finally, we covered the control phase where the Six Sigma team goes for a full-scale implementation of the improvement action plan and sets up controls to monitor the system in order to sustain the gains. Coming back to our example of the food manufacturing company, let us now understand how they solved the problem with the texture of the icing using Six Sigma. The Six Sigma team started by defining the problem using VOC, FMEA, and the CTQ tool. It was identified that the CTQ was thickness of icing. Based on this, a project charter was created with a clear business case, problem statement, goal statement, milestones, and scope of the project. After this, details of team members, communication, responsibility, risks, and dependency for the project were also defined. The team then created a high-level process map, SIPOC, to understand the flow of work. In the measure phase, the team built performance standards to understand the operational definition of the problem, ways to measure the data, type and source of the data along with target and defect definition of the problem. The team also built L2 and L3 process maps to understand the as-is process and its gaps. MSA was done to understand whether the measuring instrument, the people involved, and the process were aligned to the expected standard. During a brainstorming session, the team identified the potential causes of the problem. It was found that the amount of water in the product and the temperature of the product had correlations with viscosity. It was also noted that the viscosity was being measured after the product was already made, which resulted in scrapping the product. The potential causes were then segregated into categories using CNA matrix to understand which category caused more trouble, whether the amount of water present in the product or the temperature of the product or both. After this, the segmentation was done to understand the controllable and measurable causes to arrive at the vital few causes of the problem. In the analysis phase, the team validated the vital few causes related to the problem by using Six Sigma tools like hypothesis testing, graphical summary analysis, etc. Based on the analysis and conclusions, they suggested the solution by providing the proper recipe that included the, um, the amount of water required for the right viscosity and the exact temperature, i.e. 230 degrees, required to heat the product for the proper texture. Besides this, in order to ensure the viscosity is accurate, they also decided to place an inline bricks meter that would measure the viscosity during the process. The action plans for the same were put in place. In the improved phase, the action plans were validated and prioritized using the 2x2 two two matrix and the FMEA. These action plans were piloted on a sample batch and then implemented across the process. The action plans were tracked for improvement using a tracker and then presented to the team. These improvements helped ensure the product had the right texture and viscosity before it was packaged and shipped. Finally, the results were controlled using a control plan. The control plan ensured that temperatures were recorded during the manufacturing of the product. Viscosity was measured during the manufacturing process and again after the product was packaged to ensure consistency. This is validated by the Six Sigma Champion, Sponsor, and Black Belt. Different types of control charts and pokey yoke methods were used to track and sustain consistency in the performance. The project was highly successful and resulted in savings of $1 million per year. End of the day, Six Sigma benefits its practitioners and stakeholders by leading to greater efficiency, productivity, 
and in turn, cost savings. Further, its results are quantifiable. Six Sigma practice has to begin with the management, but flow both top-down and bottom-up, meaning all employees at all levels need to be engaged. 